Thank you everyone and welcome back to DevNet Create. We have an amazing session here lined up for you that I think you're going to find very engaging and very insightful. My name is Chuck Stickney. I'm responsible for our DevNet partner engagement programs, which means I'm out there finding partners and helping bring them into our DevNet ecosystem to help deliver capabilities and services to our customer. In this session, I'm very excited that we're bringing a special guest in here from our partner ESOT. Uh, our special guest is Alejandro. Alejandro, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about ESOT and why you're excited to be here today. Uh, hi, Chuck. Hi to everyone. I am really excited to, to be in DevNet Create. It's my first time. Uh, I joined last year, but we were not a DevNet uh, a partner yet, a specialist. So I am really glad to be here and show my experience with, uh, with the certification and, and everything. That's fantastic, and we're we're glad to have you have you in here, and you know, welcome to your to your first active participation in DevNet Create. With ESOT, I know that you're a partner that has been involved with Cisco for quite some time. Can you give the audience a little bit of an understanding of what it is ESOT's been doing over the last uh, however many years, and why you looked to engage with DevNet? Okay. Well, ISAT has been with Cisco in the, since the um, 1990s, and um, in 19 no sorry in 2001, we start to make a, a development group, and this group was in charge of the uh, integration with the contact center, especially with the contact center. We we joined the ATP program with the UCC, and we have to make a team that really uh, start to doing this uh, this integration uh, with with our customers. So we start to doing this with with Cisco, and that's what we, how we started. We have a, a small group of uh, developers, and uh, we start you know. Doing all the CVPs, the uh, the contract center integration with the customers and all that. Th that's great. So when you when you say ATP, just to kind of catch our partner or catch our audience up with that, what that is is that's a program that Cisco has done that we call our advanced technology partner, and that was really looking for partners to bring them in and apply advanced technologies to Cisco Kit and, and to Cisco services. And with you starting in the contact center business, that was obviously a big push for you to really have a lot of direct customer and line of business type of engagements. Can you talk about that direct business experience you've had and how you, you're able to leverage your software development skills to help address those customer challenges? Sure. Well, at the time, there was no DevNet. So we really start from, from uh, you know, all the documentation and I start to develop some kind of skills with the development team. You know? And well, on that time, on that time, we have a really direct contact with the customer because the need really is for the user and the user user. So we have to uh, take uh, in 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 context everything uh, from from our user and from the user user or the client. So we we really engage with the more the business part of the of the. Uh, Cisco environment with the contact center, and we develop from there to to now uh, some kind of uh, knowledge about how to interact with the with the operational part of the the our customers. Uh, really was hard uh, at the beginning. We we were lost. <laughs> we we kind of uh, go by day by day and start to doing this uh, with along with Cisco. Cisco helped us a lot. Uh, on that time, like I said, it was not that net on that time, and it, it was kind of kind of hard. You know, right now is is some very very different than on that time. I, I'm glad to hear you say that we've we've made it easier for for partners like yourselves and developers like yourselves to really find information and really understand how to work with within the the capabilities of the tools, what API documentations, what the features and functionalities are. With that software practice that you've had there, can you talk about what you've used DevNet resources for and how that's helped you build your the new products and services that you're trying to deliver to your customers? Sure. Well, 
we, we have to change. Uh, um, well, last year we started to look for DevNet, really. Uh, we kind of introduced a little bit on the previous year, but not really, um, really engage with DevNet since last year. We, we just start to, you know, really be, be involved with. And uh, why is that? Well, we, we, we thought on that time that uh, really that was not really a structure with the, uh, the DevNet uh, program. And since we start to get involved, we see that that changed a lot. And the DevNet really helped us to really empower us to, to really make a difference, a, a value added to our customers. And since then, well, we, we really changed even the, the way we uh, approach to our customers, how we can not only with the content center, but with the other technologies, uh, you know, the, the data center, the networking, uh, the security, and we kind of uh, start to, to talk in different way. The conversation is more, more uh, value, value center not only develop but the whole the whole idea of how to to for our customers to give them more value with the, with the offer that cisco make with their products so really that's what that help us a lot in in this in this since we got joined devnet to now that that's great and i know part of your process for joining devnet was uh, individuals the technologists in your team going through the DevNet certifications to really, you know, demonstrate and to, to prove the, the, the technical capabilities that you have. Can you talk about how that process helped you understand a bit more about Cisco and show you ways that there, there, there are possibilities for you to take your software expertise and apply them to areas that you weren't familiar with prior to that process? Sure. Well, first of all, we, in our team, we said we have to start from something. And what we did was we, everyone in our team was, uh, uh, have to get the associate certificate just to start to talk the same language. From there, we start to, to pick up the individuals that, uh, that more fit the different specialization, specialization that we needed. Uh, what I mean that for IoT, for security, for for all the specialists that we needed. Uh, of course, the most experienced got the professional, the professional uh, certified. And, and from that, we, we can establish a baseline of, of the way we communicate and the way we interact with our customers. And in that way, we kind of uh, uh, empower of what we are going to do. But we start with that. Everyone in, in our team is at least associate. So that's, I think that, that really helped us to establish this, a, a very good baseline. That's fantastic. And I know you said you started in the collaboration and contact center space. And as, as you started to, to learn through those certifications, so you mentioned IoT, and, and I know you've talked about enterprise networking. How did that process help you understand or help you identify if there was additional places where you could leverage your skills and talents and continue applying your, your software development practice craft onto the Cisco platforms? Okay, well, uh, it really opened our, our, our view of all this Cisco offering. We were very focused on, on contact center and we were very good at it. We are really good at it. But now with the with the uh, um, the networking, it opened us. You know the uh, the automati automatization, the the um, configuration as code, something that we never never thought even exist. So uh, it also helped us. You know even with the, our problems that we have on the contact center, the way we troubleshoot issues, it also helped us because. The view of also the network really helps us, even with security. Uh, the the IoT really help us to to get even a new way of uh, of uh, customers. You know the manufacturing, 
even right now we are starting to talk with customers that are really interesting of you know the age computing you know the programmability on the devices and all that that really uh, really help us to start a new conversation with the customers and with the new customers from the point of view of development uh, we already have these customers but just only for the point of view of the cisco product right now we are start talking about add value to the cisco products with this programmability on the edge and 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 really that open new opportunities for isat i love that opportunity for you to be able to identify some of those new opportunities and find ways to 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 deliver more value and you know for your opportunity for your uh for your personnel to be able to become even more business relevant uh to, to your own customers Mm -hmm. Can you tell our audience a little bit about the types of new opportunities that you, new opportunities that you're finding? Maybe an example in IoT that uh, you, you might be able to talk through. Sure, uh, we've been working with uh, an edge edge computing for you know for React to some kind of issues on the manufacturing area, like uh, you know the the Colbert, you know the the one that that uh, goes to to different part of the of the process if there's some issue with the, the this part we kind of image processing what is happening and with that we can make actions right on the um, plant not go to the cloud and and do all this and that's with the cisco products and we don't need another server we do it right on the routers and that's also an, uh, something that is really, really work for, for the customer and for us. Right now, we start this kind of conversation with them. And they are really happy that, that ISAT can offer these val value added uh, solutions that can help them, you know, to take more of what they have, really. That, that warms my heart, honestly, hearing you talk about that story. I, I have a history with IoT and you know, hearing that you're, be, you're able to be successful in leveraging some of those edge compute type of use cases and, and really both integrate that with both the edge as well as, that, as tying that into perhaps cloud operations or remote presence uh, data center operations. Can you talk about how your software skills may be used to not only help solve the business challenge that's there, um, we're coming here from Cisco. We've, we've spent almost no time talking about how you as a software, uh, as a software player could interact with the infrastructure. Are, are you finding ways to leverage your talents to also interface with the infrastructure for deployments and maintenance and operations beyond the business value that's there as well? Well, uh, really, really, uh, you know, the, the view that all these, uh, you know, tools that we have, what, what I mean by tools is all the knowledge that we uh, got with the certification it really help us, you know, look more wide vision of what are the issues of the maintenance, the support, and, and also give us more uh, insightful of what the programs, problems of the system that we have. You know, like I said, the troubleshooting, really knowing more about the network really help us a lot to do a better troubleshooting, even with, you know, with the contact center. Right now we help, uh, you know, uh, our customers when we have a network issue to really detect without the, 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 all the, the um, information that we get, we will be able to say, you know, we have an issue here. And without this, uh, this knowledge, we, we couldn't do it. And right now, it really help us with that. Fantastic. Can you talk about any resourcing that you're finding in DevNet today that's helping you beyond the certifications that is helping you advance your knowledge and capabilities for doing things like network troubleshooting and, and how that's helping you get deeper into that space? Sure. Well, uh, the, the sandbox was really, really good at the beginning and for testing our, our uh, knowledge and even for, you know, for uh, a try testing of some of the issue that we have. Uh, the code exchange also helped us to know what is there, 
you know, to 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 see what is in in what is doing in 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 the community with uh, with DevNet. Uh, really, all the information that is on the page is really valuable. Uh, you know, for knowledge, for conversation with other with other uh, DevNet uh, people, etc. So, so really, is is a, a, a very good platform. You know, to to really interact, to to start to to get knowledge about you know all the Cisco products and what you can do and what is and what has been done with that, and 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 that's really great. Really, the platform is is. Oh, for, for my point of view, is one of the best that I that I know. Alejandro, I might quote that and maybe get it printed on a couple T-shirts that we might hand out at some point. So thank thank you very much for that. I, I think I'm joking, but we'll we'll figure that out at the next time that we see each other in person. With the sandboxes and the, and the resources that you're using, have you found those to be tools that you can use to not only learn, but are you leveraging those resources to help you develop products and solutions that you're trying to deliver to your customers today? Yes, sure. It is, it is one of the things that I really like about the, the platform because you have the, the resources to do your, you know, your your testing, your your uh, proof of concept, your everything that you need without you know all this investment that you have to do you know just for for a proof of, of concept. So uh, I really encourage you know the the community to start using the the sandboxes. Um, it, it's really a, a good a good place to start even you know to develop your own skills you know not only for proof of concept but you know I want to know how to you know, to use Ansible or whatever you want to, is is there? You 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 get your hands dirty. You know, uh, not not just learning with the, with the, you know, with the all the theory, but you, you know, you just do it, and and that's great, really great. Brilliant. I, I I love that advice that you're that you're giving to our audience and to the DevNet community of how you are finding value in these resources and how you're using them to add to your capabilities and further your business. As we're wrapping this session up, is there anything else, Alejandro, that you would like to, any other additional wisdom or advice that you would like to give to, to our audience today? Sure, sure. Uh, one thing that is, is, is starting to work with us is to really get involved with the customer. What I mean by that is listen to them, uh, trying to, to know what, what are the issues uh, that they have, uh, try to, uh, even uh, be empathic about what what they 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 really need. One of the things that we start to doing is with the we have customers that have uh, um, how you call it is uh, management inside management people from ISA, ISAT work with the customer and and really really help us you know with our own people to know what are the everyday issues what are the repetitive tasks and and that that thing that you know the developers we don't know that so we have to ask we have to listen uh, and in 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 this way is is really a good practice you know to if you have an you know an inside uh, inside people your own people working with the customer you know it, it's more uh, open conversation with them and see what are the their issues what they do and all that and and really start from there because for the developer we don't really know what is the day by day operation and and i think that's one of the best advice that i can give them to everyone i think that's brilliant advice and I think the approach that you bring of coming from a software background and, and really talking about focusing on the, the customer needs and the customer outcomes is a great testament to how ESAT is coming to market and, and the value that you're bringing to your customers. And I love the story of where you've leveraged DevNet to learn about new mechanisms or new ways to apply your craft to Cisco. So I, I think that's a great story for many of our audiences that uh, they can replicate and, and, and kind of follow the lead that you're setting in this regard. 
So with that, Alejandro, I very appreciate your, your, your presence here. This, I think this is a great conversation. I think our audience is smiling and nodding along as we're talking through this conversation. And I think the, the, the insight that you've imparted to the audience is a fantastic example of the DevNet community giving back to the DevNet community. So again, warm thank yous uh, for your time and, and your participation in this event. To our audience, Thank you for attending this session here. You can reach out uh, to us through the feedback uh, mechanism for this session and you know, com give us any questions or comments and myself, I'll follow up with you. I'll engage with Alejandro if we have specific questions for, for him and for Isat. And thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of DevNet Create.